Hello, my wonderful people. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on your time zone or anytime you are coming across my platform. If it is your first time and you like what you are watching, kindly subscribe, put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when we upload a new video. Here in Linda's TV show, we react to all forms of videos and we we'll sit down there to watch it together with you. And I want to appreciate YouTube for creating this wonderful platform. I put a disclaimer that here in Linda's TV show, we do not promote violence. We do not promote hate speech. We do not promote misleading information. We are here to inform and educate the members of the public about the happenings. And again, Chief Dan Ulasi, who is, uh, of course, a politician, held a statesman, and uh, is. Uh, also a political analyst and, uh, of course, uh, analyst of sorts on all national issues. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Olasi, for good joining morning, us. Good morning, and thanks and for having me. It's good to here. see you. It's a thank you. All right, so let's first of all start with the state of insecurity. I mean, you listen to the uh, newspaper review and uh, some of our reviewers' uh, sentiments on the issue of insecurity. So, I mean... Uh, Chooks did say that this is not something that is new. We've heard several exposés, we've heard several reports, and it seems as if you know we're still applying the same kind of method for for different you know situation. But l let's get your take. Th there is a general outcry that Nigeria right now is under siege. Do you, do you agree with that? Well, I you know about four years ago on this platform, I I said Nigeria was gradually coming to the level of uh, Afghanistan. Some friends attacked me when I left the studio, but those friends today are calling saying they are sorry. I said, be sorry for yourself. I, with your humility, I, I think a lot. I have vision for tomorrow. Uh, some years back, I used to be very sad with those who ascribe to our country some level of malig malignant pessimism. If, if everything was dead, I said, you might be crazy. But today I'm the one who is not apologizing <coughs> to them because I don't know whether, as I speak, we have a country. For you to be able to make a change in any system you find yourself, you must have changed yourself. You must be a process of change yourself. And when you look at the antecedents of uh, Tinubu and his family, apart from Clinton and his wife, no leader anywhere in the world, past or present, nears the credentials he came into office with. Former senator, former governor, and now president of Nigeria. His wife, a former senator, vice president, a former governor, a senator, chief of staff, speaker of the federal house. How can you beat that credential? How can you? Isn't that incredible? And we are here talking about security, that, 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 that. I was watching him in a way. If I open up my phone, you know, it's a long time I shed tears last. When I look at children lying beside their dead mothers in Plateau. They didn't know their mothers have died. And they were still waiting for their mother to come up and maybe give them some milk to suck. And my president was in a way for inauguration of a governor. That is the priority of President Ahmed Tinubu, who struggled for democracy with MK Oyabiola in this country. He was in a way. People are being killed in Southern Kaduna. They, yeah, they faced an explosion in a, a in battle. A, a there's crisis everywhere in this country. And there was a time I was here, I said, I'm not a security expert, but it's simple common sense. There's one young man called Nabi Khan. You can quantify him. You know where he is. You're keeping him. The bandits, you cannot quantify. The uh, Boko Haram, you don't quantify them. I don't know where they are. I don't know where they're coming from. But I believe most of them are Nigerians. Have we made any effort in terms of dialogue? If these people are Nigerians, what are our traditional rulers doing to relate to these people? What are their problems? Because you see that every conflict is about unresolved grievance. In all situations, there's something worrying somebody somewhere that he's protesting about. And in a country where more than 100 million people are now, they are so poor that a senior president is doing a 61 year birthday, closes a stadium in Uyo, and you don't want young people to kidnap other people. I can't, uh, it's a matter of contradiction. I don't know where we're coming from. But Chief, l l let, me, let me ask you Please. something you said just now that caught my attention. Uh, are you saying it's time to call a war council? 
more than time to call a war council. And it is sad because I believe Tinubu is very competent, with a lot of experience, that he needed no advice from anybody. But the problem is that he cannot sit down one place to think anymore. He was in a way, and his wife was here addressing the kidnap of a man and his uh, six uh, daughters. I think one or two have been killed now. Mm -hmm. The wife, first lady, was addressing the country on behalf of his of her husband, who was in Owe, having fun at the inauguration of what? Of what? Inaugurating where you can't move between Owe and uh, Olo. Or, or low it and, wasn't uh, there alone. There are several governors. It's a well. no-go area. Many places in this country are no-go areas. I've been in this business, uh, you know, for a very long time since we started politics with Malama Menokano. We joined him myself. I mean, all of them are dead. Now, Shina Achebe, people don't remember that Shina Achebe was a member of People's Redemption Party. We looked at Amino Kano for love. He loved this country so much that a lot of us joined him to see whether we can recalibrate this country. But typical of what is usual, we lost out. We had two governments in Kano and Kaduna. Balarebe later became reckless and they impeached him. So later we lost Kano too. So what I'm saying is, we have to have a system of first to identify if we want to be a country. Because the system, we're not at a precipice. And it will be dangerous if this precipice becomes irreversible. It will be very dangerous. Because nobody wants to go on the highway anymore. There are time there was in this country. People travel only at night. Beautifully can move from the east to the north at night. All right, so let, let me come in here. I, I, I hear, you know, the need to dialogue, and I, and I hear you say there should be conversations, perhaps a war cancelled. But beyond that, there have also been accusations of complicity, enablers of this, funders and sponsors of terrorism. We are yet to see them named. We are yet to see them shamed. Beyond the conversation, do you not think that even the enablers, even some who have been accused to be within the coffers of government, should actually be actually, you know, uh, brought to book? You know, I had advised some leaders, I had the privilege of getting close to them, that we need some form of strategic discipline, not self-indulgence. This is a crisis in the country today. You know, people have a reflective in, in, uh, instinct towards uh, self-preservation. And I used to say that when you combine this political ignorance that you see all over the place, you think they are politicians, they are ignorant. When you combine it with Union arrogance, you have political blindness. That is what is happening in all 36 states. Somebody is a governor sitting on a table looking at three, four, five, ten billion. That's what he's person. He doesn't think about anything else. Can you imagine my sister and my brother, 70, 774 local governments, not water, water is not running anywhere. Where do you begin to discuss this country? Water is not running, 774 local governments, water is not running anywhere. And they're not interested. They are not interested. And you don't want young men and women, you know, not to enter the business of kidnapping, where they get easy money, bad as it is. But what do you want them to do? When you look at people carrying, uh, you know, jeeps, a uh, governor is moving with 15, but, 20 jeeps. But Chief Olasi, is, is that really an excuse for criminality? No, no, ex excuse for killing? Is, uh, what is the excuse for having a bad day at 61 and closing the stadium? What is the excuse for that? In the country, you tell people to tighten their belts, and they have no belt anymore to tighten, no stomach to tighten with any belt, and they watch a stadium closed down for somebody to do a 61 bad day. For what achievement? For what contribution to the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Because his people are servants, cooking their servants all over the country. Is that his achievement of 61 years? No, Ridiculous I, I, things. I, I, let, let me tell you something. Ridiculous things are happening in this country, and we don't want to address it. We must have to begin to address it. Or else the system will collapse. Well, Chief Fulasi, the people of Akwa won't stay. I don't. I don't. No, I'm telling I don't you think, because when he I don't think referring to them as silent across the country is, is a I very have, charitable one. Behind me, when he became governor, he swore that his people would stop being cooks and uh, stewards every, every, all over this country, and they make a lot of money from that. When he left, the number increased. The number increased, and those who do this, they don't go to school. They don't go to school. 
every state has its own negative peculiarity. But for a president of Senate, under the situation Nigeria is passing, he's the greatest offender to close down a stadium with the first lady of Nigeria sitting down there. Do you see the shame a few days ago? They were launching a book on Buhari. Who put Nigeria 20, 30 years behind? Launching a book. Gowon was there. And the president of the Federal Republic and I was there praising him. I was just listening to the discussions people were having at the uh, press review with Pantani and all those stuff. Tell me what has gotten better since APC took over. In the next couple of months, I'll be living in the Pakistan politics just to become an advisor for whomsoever wants to. Because what I see in the field, why would there be no complicity? Each time I travel, and I drive myself most of the time, I have a tendency of trying to give police people, how many people on the road, especially in Anambra, that, I mean the South East that is occupied, I give them money. And you see the relaxation you know, in, their, in, their, in their loops, how happy they, they get. And I ask them, why are you here? Why can't you people clear these bandits, whomever they are? He said, okay, in this convoy you are looking at, you will see about legislators, governors, people who have no business address, carrying not less than seven, eight, ten mobile police. You see them so fat. Some of them have been paid, apart from the salary, three, four thousand naira every day. And so you want us to go and die? You want us to go and die for Nigeria? When something happens to us, in 24 hours they will remove our families from the various police uh, barracks. These are people God's supposed to be guarding you and I. And you see the grievance behind them. Is anybody thinking? When the uh, new IG came, he said he would be lying in something, something. The same Nigerian police. So my worry, in summary, about Nigerian security, we have to recalibrate. The president has to tell himself the truth. I think people are now making money, both the military, everybody. It's now good business. We, we, we. Nigerian insecurity is now good business oh. because a lot of unaccounted money is being budgeted oh. and nobody Which accounts knows, for complicity as well. Nobody knows what is going on with the money. So for them, this insecurity should continue. Because none of them, I haven't heard of any big person in this country that has lost a son or a daughter. Once that starts happening, then you see a change. All right. And then it's now here in the FCT. Yes. We saw the town hall in Buari that was um, held with the minister of the FCT, Nyesun uh, And he said that there will not be any hiding place for any bandit. But beyond that, there is still fear. I mean, a lot of people are really worried that now that it is in the seat of power, perhaps uh, with people sitting up, uh, Professor Joy Zilu said, and I'll quote her, she said, nowhere is safe in Nigeria. The widespread killings, kidnappings, abductions in peace times are condemnable and unacceptable. She says it directly abrogates citizens' right to life, bodily integrity, dignity, and the ability to earn a living. And so people are not even safe enough to go to work. You know, the, the, the right of authority rests on regimented formality. That's what is authority. The authority to supervise me, to coerce me, is regimented formality. Because things happen the same way. You come to work, you see policemen follow you. They are regimented to do it. You see army people follow you. There are processes in government that are regimented and they become formal. So also the security services should have formalities in the way they perform. But nobody, just like Joy Zilo said, you just read out, when we have lost values, you know, what are our values anymore? We have no value for life. And we'll be a country that has no value for life. That is why people are being killed all over the place. Any day you don't have on your news how many people kidnapped, how many people killed, then it's an exception to the rule. That is now the rule, that people must be dying every day. Plateau, Southern Kaduna, here, in Olu, Ihala area. So okay, I'm going to ask him. Yes. Uh, let, let me interrupt you, because yes. if we keep talking about what is wrong... No, we're, we're we, not talking about what is wrong, because what is wrong is also part of the solution. Because it is common yes. sense... Yes, let's go to the solution now. Yes, because what I'm saying is that this president 
has an unprecedented record following him. And I have said, that was the first thing I said when I started talking. He's, he was a legislator, he was a state governor, he's now president of Nigeria. So there's nothing about leadership that will be Greek to him. First lady, a senator, or oh, was a senator. A vice president, eight years governor, senator. Chief of staff, speaker, tell me who has a better credential that they cannot sit down and start applying some form of solution from the experiences they have gathered over the years. I should be able, if I'm sitting down with, uh, with the service chiefs, if they tell any lie, I can see through it. I was a Biafran Army officer. When you tell a lie, I can see through it, unless you are accomplice it. How do we start? About just before you, you came back on board, I have seen Nam the Kanu two times with the uh, DSS. Currently one of the most brilliant, well-spoken young men this country has ever produced. One, one of the well-spoken, brilliant young men this country has ever produced. What is, he, what is his problem? I'm talking about justice. And I asked President Tinubu, why don't you take one risk? Bring out Nam the Kanu. Look at the judgment of the Supreme Court on him. Almost 99%, the Supreme Court of Nigeria condemned the Federal Republic of Nigeria about all they did against Nam the Kanu. But said because the appeal court said the lower court had no jurisdiction that they should go back for trial. They didn't condemn him for doing anything. His problem was justice for his people. And I asked the president, why don't you start somewhere? That's why I said Nam the Kanu is an identifiable quantity. Grant him, uh, uh, the appeal court had released him already. Grant him freedom. Keep him in one place and see whether ninety percent of the problem in the South East will not. But, but he escaped. Down. He escaped from. He Why did he escape? The same Supreme Court said that his family compound was attacked and more than twenty-seven people were killed, and he escaped. Supreme Court of Nigeria said it. Didn't you listen to the judgment? He was running for his life. They attacked his father's compound, and he escaped. That was why he left. So what I'm saying is that let us start somewhere with some experimentation. Now the government is holding him. Let's take a risk. I'm prepared to guarantee it. that risk the government will take. Because I discussed with him. And I float on the same level with him. You may not like his methodology, but he has a lot of common sense. Is Nam the Khan responsible for what is happening in Plateau? With the bandits, with Boko Haram? It's everywhere. Is he responsible for the explosion in Ibadan? Everywhere. So why can't we start? You know, Igbo have a saying, if you have a lot of enemies surrounding you, you buy drinks for some. So that they are drinking, you will face some others. When you finish with them, you come back to those who are drinking. You cannot face all enemies at the same time. That is what this country is pretending to do. Because what started as uh, protests in the South East, it's all over the country now. Because you know, they will tell you we're on top of it. And they call the emergency meeting of all the security agents. We have been hearing this in Buhari. And what has changed? And we are still Nigerians, all Nigerians. I believe there must be something fundamental in the problems in this country that we can address. Dialogue, dialogue. There will be no peace without dialogue. Mm -hmm. Give and take, no matter what it is. Somebody you're calling a bandit is somebody, it's somebody's son, it's somebody's daughter. We can approach if there is no complicity. If there's no complicity at a very high level, it's not an impossible thing to sort, sort out. But let us start somewhere. Let's use the South East as an example. Bring this young man out. Keep him somewhere. And I'll tell you, you will not hear of kidnapping or anything. People are using his name to commit crimes in the South East because he's being held. And they can't understand why he's being held because he's talking of justice for his people. I don't know why the bandits are fighting. I'm not from North East or North West. They must have a reason. Nobody puts his life on the line just for the sake of putting it on the line. Whether the reason is justifiable or not, it is a reason. All right. So the government has to look into and, and discuss. Absolutely. Okay, so talking about life on the line, let's look at another angle of this conversation. I know that we were going to bring it up at some point. Uh, reconciliation in River State. I mean, uh, one governor, former governor, who said he put his life on the line for the current one. And uh, it, it seems as if all is not, you know, happy in Wonderland because 
we see the back and forth be between the, the minister of the FCT and, of course, the governor of uh, River State, Simfubara. So I, I know that you are a mediator, and conversations of this sort is something that you have also waded in in the past. Do you think there is any end in sight to this? Well, the unfortunate thing for me now is I've not... I have not spoken with, uh, maybe I will see him today or tomorrow. I have not spoken with the FCT minister, but he knows I'm in town. But I'm likely to see him. I've spoken with people on the side of the governor. Because just like uh, Ruth Miyamichi introduced Nguike to me, so also Nguike introduced Fubara to me in his office. The day the chairman of a board of trustees of PDP, led by uh, Nwabara, came to put you know, elections had not happened that time, trying to see whether we can mend fences. I was in his office watching them where they were having their meeting. He would stay with them a little, and he would come back, and we would be joking, saying one thing or the other. I was a very disciplined person. That was the day he introduced me to Fubara. And said a lot of very good things about him. I don't know what has happened. You know, I, I, I don't like making public comments if I don't have the facts with me, especially when I'm in a position to have facts. But the only thing I will warn both uh, Nguike and Fubara is not to put the name of uh, Peter Odili to any form of shame because he's the architect of the good governance and indeed there has been good governance in River State from his time up to Nguike. If every state has applied their resources for development as much as Rivers had done, I think... The but we saw a peace pact that happened between the governor, uh, his, his uh, godfather, some yes. members of the executive, the president as well, and uh, we also understand that Dr. Peter Dele also was part of that conversation. Yes. But beyond that, there seems to be have stretched the rancor a little further, even with name callings, you know, at, at gatherings, referring to the governor as a small rat, you know, and certain ideologies that one would not naturally, uh, you know, akin to somebody of that status. And coming from somebody who also knows that such things are also, you know, bad for political demeanor. Well, uh, you just said what, uh, uh, you know, what I was alluding to. If you listen to what happened in Amok and a couple of other places and the rhetorics of people, you know that there was no peace agreement. That's the summary. All that happened in the presidential villa, there was some paper was written and somebody was told to sign. And he signed for the sake of peace that he hoped would happen. But it hasn't happened. Because if there was intention for peace, all the rhetorics in the past one week in River State would not have been happening. So it shows you that things have collapsed. But I think the governor is doing at least... He's represented the names of commissioners who resigned to the House of Assembly. Mm -hmm. So he's done a, an essential aspect of his own part. But this public rhetoric, I don't understand. And I said I will not comment on it until I see him weaker. Because he's a young man who has respect for me. He listens to me. I want to know really where he's coming. Because I don't know where he's coming from anymore. When we fought in the past, I supported him for presidency. Because the southern governors of all parties said a southerner should become president. I mean, presidential candidate to all the major parties. So we supported him. But when he lost, I had to support the candidate who won in my party. So since then, we've not really sat down to talk. But I'm making efforts to see whether we can talk. Hmm. And I want to know where he's coming from. Okay, let's um, move on to something else. Yes. Um, the 2023 elections ended. Of course, you know, as usual, plenty of uh, cases went to court. And only about a week ago now, just Friday last week, the Supreme Court ruled on a number of uh, governorship election cases that have come before it. And uh, I think w one of the most interesting, or two of the most interesting, I should say, Kano and Plato. What are your thoughts on these cases and what are your expectations concerning the other ones that are coming up, Nasarawa and, of course, um, Rivers? You know... I, at least for once, the Supreme Court realized that they have to follow public opinion. Mm -hmm. What is public opinion? Public opinion does not mean changing the law, does not mean telling them what to write. Public opinion means that people voted for, for Kunle, and somebody went to court to challenge Kunle. Mm -hmm. And you had passed through one stage, and they said Kunle did not win. You go to stage two, and they said Kunle did not win, when the people knew they voted for you. The Supreme Court only recognized that if they did not do what they did in Kano, only God knows what will be happening in this country. Only God in heaven knows 
You know, you know, Kano is a very volatile place. Only God knows. Not to talk of Plato. This thing happening in Plato has been going on from Buhari's time. Yes, man. Yes, man. Yes, man. And you know, government, I don't think they have declared them terrorists yet. So it is a welcome development that they appreciated the, the voice of the people. The franchise people showed on the election day that we voted for Mr. A and finally Mr. A was recognized. But to that extent, how about those senators and members of the federal houses and the state houses of assembly? That the same tribunals, the same election, they treat them away. Especially in Plato. Gave virtually all the seats there to APC. On the same you know, reasoning. Because I was looking at somebody you people had here on Monday, a senior advocate. He was having contradictions in what he was saying. How can a high court judge or an appeal court judge go contrary to a Supreme Court decision that is supposed to be a reference point? You do not discuss pre-election matters at the tribunal. But that was what happened in just. And people lost their seats. I haven't heard that NJC is questioning anybody, has set up a committee to do anything. I haven't heard of it. So in as much as we celebrate the uh, judgment they gave for about five or six days, I don't know what is going to happen about uh, uh, Rivers and... Uh, Nassarawa. And uh, which other state? Nassarawa. Rivers and Nassarawa. And Nassarawa yeah. state. Mm -hmm. Because the whole Nassarawa is so evident. Even lawyers explain what happened in two local governments. I, th I think what Ali Ulemo was saying, the senior advocate was saying on Monday, was that even if the even if the ruling is wrong, it's a ruling of the court, well, and that, you, that, you, that, you, that, you that, have to abide by it. We appreciate that. That, that that was what I called judicial rascality, which he was fun, he, he was quarrelling with, and I said it after the judgment that kept Nambikano in still in prison, that it was judicial rascality. How can you, out of ten items, you say somebody was right in nine? Because right. something happened. All right, Is Chief. It, if Supreme we, Court we had already given a here. decision, sorry. Uh, we, we really have to cut into your thoughts now because um, I'm sure Rene will be eager to take off on Kakaki Socials. But we must thank you first. Chief Dan Alassi has been talking about the state of the nation and also looking at how perhaps you can also wade into the issues of reconciliation efforts in River State. Thank you so much, my wonderful viewers, for watching this video together with me from the beginning to the end. Like I said before, if you like what you see here, if you like what I do in this platform, as you have finished watching this video, please hit that red button that says subscribe and put on your notification bell to all notifications. In that way, you'll be able to know when I upload a new video. Share my videos, leave your comments in the comment section constructively. Until I meet your way again in my next video, I still remain your Linda's TV show. Bye-bye.